really trying to develop sophisticated technology. Certainly, you know, during the 20th century, the world wars, you know, we would develop, you know, try to develop, you know, very sophisticated submarines and, uh, you know, carriers, you know, aircraft carriers and so forth. But we've seen a revolution, hence where the names come from, the past two decades about the sophistication and the focus of our military on very advanced technology. And much of this, much of this RMA has been based on space assets. We're going to learn about what a lot of the military-based space assets are here momentarily. Nobody's on Facebook, right? Yay! All right. Rely on space assets. But when you're taking notes, you should also abbreviate just like you're flowing. Like, do not write out technological. Write tech. Right? I would just write much tech based on space if I were taking notes on that. That's why, why your flowing skills come in good and handy. President Bush, in the early part of the decade, really called for space dominance by our military. Okay? He really wanted, um, we'll learn about a program that Reagan talked about, uh, tried to usher in, that kind of fell by the wayside in the 90s. President Bush, you know, thought the forms of that were important. So he really wanted the United States to really have space dominance. <laughs> Oops. And then Obama has kind of backed off of that the United States should be the space hegemon. We're all familiar with that word, right? Hegemon? Yeah. That means leader, ruler, dominator, however, you're, you know, depending on if you're a policy debater or a critique debater. Leader right. or dominator, dictator, whatever. And Obama's backed off of this, and again, you also have an abbreviation for Obama, right? If we're, you know, B.O. maybe? Capital B, capital O. It's unfortunate. It's not my fault, but those are individuals. But Okay, and he's, way, he's back way off. He doesn't necessarily think the United States should control outer space. Um, he really is looking for more towards international cooperation. I think a lot of the moves that he's trying to make, remember how we talked about Bush was all about Project Constellation, and Obama was really trying to back off of that project? A lot of what Obama is trying to get past through Congress is about that, those international cooperation efforts. So that's just a little bit of kind of an anchor of revolution military affairs. We've got a military that really wants to advance technology, very sophisticated research and development going on, um, and a lot of that deals with space assets. And then we, of course, we have to have Obama in his Star Wars gear too. But wait, I thought he was in the hot. He's smiling in this picture though. Like he's just he's just fending off. He's just playing deep. He's just playing some defense there. Hmm. Over here, space assets. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the history of the U.S. and specifically the U.S. military and what we've done in space. Uh, we're going to watch a couple of videos. We're going to talk about how we control our space, as space assets, like when they go up into space. We're going to talk about what is the function of our military space assets. When we put things up in space, the military uses, what are the various functions of this? So the first thing we're going to talk about is a little bit of the history of our use of space and the beginnings of space militarization. When our military started using space, one goal, we got to protect ourselves from those red commies. And obviously I'm being very sarcastic. And we've got to protect ourselves from the Soviet Union. Okay. We've got to protect ourselves from the Soviet Union. Okay, we feared, especially during the 1960s and 70s, uh, we feared a Soviet attack. Um, and so space was uh, a way of both maintaining a defensive posture so we could know what those Soviets were doing and started developing in the 80s the discussion of using space in an offensive manner. Yes? Um, have you ever remembered the uh, procedure of something I don't. But may, if it, tell me, do you remember what a little bit about it is? I may be familiar with it, I'm just the name of it. Like an ECC of flash in outer space? No, so. <coughs> Oh, okay. No, I'm just not familiar with that. I know about ducks and cover like in water gun fights, but that may not be the same. Okay. Um, so, there are two priorities. I'm going to introduce you to a word today that's very important reconnaissance. I hope I spelled that right. Uh, yeah. Unless there's two S's, just to say, check my nose. It's two S's, R-E-C-O-N-N-A-I-S-S-A-N-C-E. -S -S -E. I've already found my first spelling error. It takes a long time to type up the notes and then do the Prezi. So, so reconnaissance has two S's, so just make a note of that. Okay. 
and surveillance. These are the two main functions, and we're going to talk about a lot more functions here in a moment, of our early space modernization programs and our current space modernization programs. Reconnaissance is a fancy term for gathering military information. Gathering military information. Just the kind of fancy term for that. Gathering military information is what reconnaissance means. And it's the search for that, the search for that military information. We had a bunch of original space programs, but the one that really kind of anchored our early space modernization days was a program called Corona. Not the beer. None of y'all should have known that that was a beer name. Okay? <laughs> Corona provided comprehensive at the time coverage and spying, surveying, okay, the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China. Okay? So, Corona, like way back in the 1960s, the 1960s is when we, Corona had its first satellite actually successfully turn film back from space. So very quickly, right, remember Sputnik's in the 1950s? Once that started, we were sending things up all the time. So Corona in the early 1960s sent back its first successful set of film from space, because we were, you know, keeping our eye on the, on the communists in the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China. Okay. Um, just for your information, the Corona program included 145 launches. So 145 different launches of putting satellites up in space under the Corona program, and it photographed the USSR up until May 1972. So a fairly long program, nearly 12 years, or a little bit over 12 years, of filming um, the Soviet Union. Okay, one thing we did get out of Corona is that um, during the 1960s, remember Sputnik took us by surprise, you all remember, we were talking about that on Tuesday, that you know we had no idea that they were going to be able to get <coughs> out in front of us for space. That hysteria amongst the U.S. government when the Soviets did that first let us believe that the Soviets then also must have had these wicked, nasty, ballistic missile capabilities. And the government started saying that there was a missile gap. Okay? Meaning that they, we, we assumed that the Soviet Union was way, 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 way ahead of us in, return, in regards to ballistic missile capabilities. The Corona program actually let us, gave us information that they weren't really that much ahead of us. So it actually kind of eased some fears and some hysteria that came out of Sputnik in regards to our beliefs about the Soviet Union. I don't know how great these pictures are going to be. Here's one of the images of Corona. Anybody want to take a guess what that is? Look at the center. It's the what? Pentagon. Pentagon. One of the first images that Corona sent back at the Pentagon. So we spied on ourselves too, I guess. But obviously we're taking images of lots of things up in our space. You really can't see the images this much. This is a report uh, that's now been declassified uh, about some of the images coming back from Corona. Obviously look behind the Iron Curtain means a lot of the communist type things here. You can kind of see that this is on the coast here of maybe a lake and so forth. The images there are very clever. I just thought that was an interesting image. Here is a shot that was brought back from the, an image taken from the Soviet Union about a particular missile site. And obviously the images aren't that clear, but hopefully the words are. And so the ability to kind of take pictures and be able to gather, recon, you know, do reconnaissance work on the Soviet Union, remember, searching for military information, uh, led us to Quote our fears a little bit that the Soviets, that there was not that missile gap that we thought that there was going to be. Let's talk a little bit more about military satellites. Those are, that is really one of the biggest pieces of the space mobilization puzzle for us. And that's used to satellites. During the Corona program, uh, one of our first early space mobilization projects was about satellites. We're going to talk a little bit more broadly about military satellites. Hey, three functions that we utilize our satellites for. Three primary. We certainly use them for a lot more. The first is to guide missiles to targets. Okay? When we are, you know, flying, you know, we've got missiles going and we've got to make sure that they are headed to, you know, we don't want to, you know, have a missile attack a schoolyard or, you know, the neighborhood. So, you know, we really do try to make sure those missiles are guided to targets like defense, you know, um, defense centers and so forth of our uh, war enemies. Fly pilotless aircraft. Okay, so aircraft and, that do not need human beings to fly them. And it's also important for you know military commanders to know what battlefields are going to look like. If some if you know we're headed into battle, you know, and you know we feel in the next few days we need to know what the terrain of certain areas uh, look like. We used that a lot in the first Persian Gulf War in the 1990s. Uh, we also used a little bit of that, we'll talk about that here in a second, in Vietnam as well. 
We have a thousand satellites right now up in Earth's orbit, and 200 of them uh, are for military purposes. So we do have a lot of military, uh, a lot of satellites up in space that are for military, for like weather 